Hi team, Mr. Vitor here. Okay, still looking at year 12 uh, A-level bridging course as we're going from GCSE to A-level maths. We're now going to look at section 8, which is dealing with SIRDs. So first of all, we're going to look at um, SIRDs in a simple context, how to simplify them. And then further, we're going to look at more complicated where we have to rationalize the denominator. Okay. A couple of things about SIRD. Remember that when you got SIRD written um, as a product of two numbers, you can split it up and rewrite it as root A times root B. And also if it was written as a fraction of A over B and square rooted, that can be rewritten as root A over root B. Okay, so it's familiar because we're going to be using these rules now. So be familiar with those two rules. So here we go. First of all, when we're looking at a root, we need to look for the highest possible square number that goes into it. So straight away in 28, you can see the 4. So I'm going to split that up and call that uh, 4. How many fours go into 28 is 7, 7, 14, 21, 28. Put a square root on that, plus 5. And I'm looking straight away 9, I can see. Um, 9 times 7 is 63, so I'm going to put 9 times 7. I'm going to replace 63 with 9 times 7. I'm replacing 28 with 4 times 9. reason being I've done that is because I want to now uh, split this up. So I've got 3 root 4 root 7. Now I can do this according to this rule. Okay, we can split this up and this little up. And likewise, I can then put root 9 root 7. Okay, don't forget all these three are times in each other, likewise with this. So what we've got here, we've got 3 times now square root. The reason why I took the high square number, because I can square root the square number. So square root of 4 is 2. And I've got root 7 here. And similarly, 5 times square root of 9 is 3. I've got root 7 here. Can't do nothing about that. So this will give me 6 times 2. I'm oh, sorry, 3 times 2 is 6 root 7. So I'll get 6 root 7. And over here, I'll get 5 times 3, which is 15. So I'll get 15 plus the root 7. In total, I've got 6 root 7s here and 15 root 7s here. So in total, I've got 21 root 7s. And that is my simplified form, 21 root 7. Okay, let's have a quick go at this next one. So first of all, let's just look for the highest square number that goes into each of these square roots. So each of these thirds. So 20 is 4, so we're going to put 4. And 20 can be split in 4 times 5. Square root there. Okay, plus 2. Now 9, I can split, uh, sorry, 9 goes into 45 5 times. So I can do 9 times 5. A square root there, so I've replaced 45 by 9 times 5, and I've replaced 20 by 4 times 5, and subtract, now root 80, now you should see that 16 can go into there, 16 times 5, 5 plus 16 is 80, so square root that, okay, I'm going to further out, go and split this up, so I've got 4 times root 4, root 5, plus 2, root 9, root 5, and minus root 16, root 5. 
So what I get here is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So 4 times 2 root 5. So that root disappears because the square root of the 4. Likewise, square root of 9 is 3. So I get 2 times 3 root 5. And similarly, I get square root of 16 is 4. Eight lots of two is eight. four lots of two is eight, so I get eight lots of root five. I get um, two times three is six, so I get um, six root five, and then I get minus four root five. Okay. So 2 times 3 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8, and that's 4 root 5. So 6, uh, 8 plus the 6 is 14. Lots of root 5s. Minus 4, lots of root 5s. So 14 lots of root 5s, take away 4 lots of root 5s. I'll end up with 10 lots of root 5s. That's my simplified final answer. this next one so we're going to cube this now before we cube it what might be a good idea is to simplify the bracket first so i'm just going to put brackets there so again this looks like similar to what we did in question one root 28 and root 63 so let's just skip that out so we said there was four goes into 20 28 seven times Add, and then there was the 9 times 7 gives me 63, so plus square root now. And then I leave the cubing at the end yet. So I get split that up root 4, root 7, plus root 9, root 7. So I've used my rule button introduce. At the beginning, this rule splitting up the product, and then I then go in square root my square number. So square root of four is two, so I get two root seven. Now square root nine, which is three root seven. Keep the cube outside. Then I simplify this bracket, so that's 2 root 7 plus 3 root 7 gives me 5 root 7. And now I'm going to go and cube it. I'm going to say 5 root 7 times 5 root 7 times 5 root 7. It turns it by itself every time. So I can split this up and say um, 5 times 5 times 5 times root 7 times root 7 times root 7. Now 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Now you should be familiar with this that root 7 times root 7 is just 7 and only one third of root 7 will remain okay let me just emphasize that point so basically what i'm saying here is if i've got a a root times a root that will then give me uh, a times a square root which then gives me a squared square root and these two will cancel each other and just leave me with a and this is what happens exactly with seven so i'll get seven root seven sorry times root seven 
which gives me 7 times 7 all over 1 root, which gives me 7 times 7 is 49. And when I square root 49, I'll just get 7. Okay, so I think you're familiar with that. So now, all I need to do is do 125, multiply that by 7 to get 875. And root 7 next. So these are forms of how to simplify it. Okay. Now sometimes we get questions on rationalizing process. So I'm going to make some of these questions up. So rationalize the denominator. So to be fair, thirds, you can't really have thirds in the denominator. We must rationalize them. So get rid of the third and change it into an integer. And that's what that rationalizing means to get rid of the third. So let's have a couple of examples. If you want to have a go at it before, you can do. Um, pause the video and try it. And if you want to just see a couple of examples first, then just carry on watching. And later pause we'll go so you might get a question like this where it says rationalize the denominator for the form so when we're rationalizing um, in one of the sections i mentioned earlier on which is a key concept is difference between two squares when you do difference between two squares if you get um, a plus b and times it by a minus b you get a times a which gives me a squared, a times b, which gives me minus a b, b times a, which gives me plus a b, and b times minus b gives me minus b squared. So the middle term cancels, and what you end up getting is a squared minus b squared. Now this is a very important concept of what we're doing now. What's happened is the middle term has gone, and you just ended up with difference in two squares. And the reason why this is important is because when we square room a number, an integer, uh, a third, the third actually disappears, as we mentioned earlier before. Okay, they cancel each other out. So, first thing to do here when we rationalize the denominator is to um, write and multiply it by a factor, top and bottom, by the um, conjugate of this, so basically 4 minus root 6 and 4 minus root 6. So this is the same divided by each other, so literally I'm times it by 1, but something important is going to happen here when I'm multiplying top and bottom by this. So let's have a go at doing this. So this will be 2 times. 4 is 8, 2 times minus um, root 6 is minus 2 root 6. Now, note what happens at the bottom. I'm going to do it in full form now. In future, I can stop doing this and just do it a lot simpler. And just remember this difference between the two squares. So, first of all, let's just times 4 by 4, which gives me 16. Then I do 4 times minus root 6, so I get 4 minus root 6. Then I get root 6 times 4, which is plus 4 root 6. And then I get root 6 times root 6, okay, so that's going to give me a minus root 6 times 6. So what happens here, which is crucial, is this is 8 minus 2 root 6. And at the bottom, what you notice now is these two middle term cancel. Okay, they cancel each other out. One's negative, one's positive. And this becomes 16. And this is root 
36 and root of 36 is just 6. So literally, the square root of the 4 is 16 and square root of root 6 is 6. The difference between two square root of 2. So what we do now is let's rewrite this as 8 minus 2 root 6 over 16 take away 6 is 10. And what we can do is simply, I'll just put an extra bit, we can divide each of those by 2. So common factor in all this is 2, so half of that is 4. Half of that is just 1 root 6, it's just root 6. All over, and half of that is 5. Final answer. And that's how you rationalize a denominator. Okay, let's have a go at number two. I'll write one down. We can pause the video. Have a go. Four over three plus root two. Okay. So you want to pause it, have a go. Otherwise, Press play. Continue watching. So the first thing first is, and I'm not going to put as many steps as I did earlier on. The first thing first is to times top and bottom by the conjugate of this, which is three minus root two. And if I do that top and bottom, start off with. Don't forget to put brackets around it. That's the first thing to do. Now. Let's write the next step. So 4 times everything in this bucket. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times root 2 is uh, minus root 2 is minus 4 root 2. Now, at the bottom, this enables me um, to rationalize the denominator. So change this into a, um, an integer. Or difference between two squares, I only end up with getting the three squared, which is nine, and it's different, so it's a minus. And square this root two is just two. Okay, so easy way to do that. Now, what we get is we get 12 minus four root two over seven. Now, <clears throat> there's no common factor in any of those, so we can't do any cancellation, and that is our final answer. Okay. Now, we'll get some tougher rationalizing um, so let's try, let's try this question three, so it's slightly harder. Now, the more difficult thing about this one is, it's got uh, two numbers at the top, it's got a whole number and a third, so let's just put 4 plus root 3 over um, 3 plus root 5. Okay, so let's start with these. And always remember we rationalize the denominator. So we're always going to times it by the conjugate of this. So basically, same numbers 3 root 5. The only difference is. Instead of plus, whatever sign that is there, you do the opposite. That's going to be a minus. If that was a plus, if that was a minus, then this would have to be a plus. So this will be the same at the top. Now remember, when I'm timesing <coughs> a few numbers together to put brackets all the way around it. Okay? Right. So we have no choice. On the top part, so let's just do it along here. Let's put a different color here. Um, let's try purple. So, but no choice but to times everything by four. First of all, four times three is twelve, and four times minus root five is minus four root five. Okay, so we times everything inside this bracket by the number 4. Now we're going to times everything inside this 
inside this bracket by root 3. So root 3 times 3, we look at 3 root 3. And root 3 times root 5, so minus plus mix and minus. And I'm going to put this all under one root, so it's just going to be 3 times 5. Now, with the denominator, I don't need to do so much work now because I know the whole reason why I've done this is because I know the middle terms are going to cancel, the ones with the thirds in it. I'm just going to end up with 3 times 3, which is 9, and root 5 times root 5, which is just minus 5. Okay. And it looks less messy this way. So we don't need to show every single step because we made that step to show the example that we know why this has happened. So let's now go and do some where possible manipulation and brushing up. Well, there's nothing much cancelling at the top, so we got 12. We've got minus root 5. We've got plus 3 root 3. And we've got minus, we can put this as 15, root 15, on the top. And on the bottom, we've got 9, take away 5 is 4. There's nothing going to cancel, nothing's going to be simplified, and that is our final answer. That's the best you're going to get. Okay? Now, sometimes they do give you questions which tend to simplify a bit better on the top. Let's just look at this final question. Question four, again, if you want to try it, pause the video, have a go. Um, otherwise, continue watching and see what, see what you think. So let's just have a look at this. Five plus root three, root six. Okay. <clears throat> So, as always, the first thing what you're going to do when rationalizing the we need to times top and bottom by the conjugate of this. So that's going to be 5 minus root 6. 5 minus root 6. Now, put brackets around everything. Okay, and let's begin. So let's just do a bit of all that we did before. Let's multiply this out. So we've got 3 times 5, which is going to give me 15. we got 3 times minus root 6, which is going to give me minus 3 root 6. Then you got root 6 times the 5, which gives me a positive 5 root 6. And you got root 6 times root 6, and positive negative makes a negative. Root 6 times root 6 is just 8. All over. Now again, this is just difference in two squares, so 5 times 5 is going to give me 25. Now, as we said earlier on, root 6 times root 6 is just 6. That's a negative, that's a positive, so that's going to be negative, difference in two squares. But this time, you can collect numbers at the top, so you got 15, you can simplify this, so 15, take away 6 is 9. And minus 3 root 6 plus 5 root 6 ends up with positive 2 root 6. Over 25, take away 6 is 19. And that is going to be your final answer simplified. Okay. Now, obviously, you can go on to the, the internet and find 
a lot more third questions but these are some explanations how the thirds work how we simplify it and get an answer and most of them you can do on your calculator and put it this in your calculator press equals to your program to rationalize the denominator okay